Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Honkai Impact third animation breakdown reaction combo. Today we have Cyber Angel Zero Exception. This is another one of the story ones. I put up a vote on the community tab a few days ago and was like, should I do the side story stuff as well? And pretty much unanimously, people were like, just keep to the main story, at least at first. If I do the others, it may just be a stream later down the line or something, but we shall see, right? So... Without further ado, let's go right into it, shall we? Let's go. Oh, that's why. I was like, why is my audio so low? All right, so this definitely follows the last one. I will admit I'm not really following the exact story as far as that goes. I'm just focusing on animation stuff. But I do remember some things. <laughs> I'm not a complete waste of space, you know? Great angle on that. Seriously, their lighting team. <laughs> Okay, that's kind of sick. <laughs> All right, let's see what this has for its uh, action animation, shall we? I like the skate shoes. Those are really clever. <laughs> Right on. <laughs> All right. Like, I already have things I want to talk about, which is always good, especially this early in. It's not even halfway, I would assume. How sick would that be to be able to do that? <laughs> I've seen that in a few other uh, animations of theirs before where they do the, uh, the circus, and I'm sure I'll talk about it again this time. Oh yeah, this one has way more fluidity than the last one. Bronya Short had some great overall choreography, but this one is really selling it with keeping the frame rate together and everything. The, it's basically fulfilling all of the gripes I had about the last one. 
which I am excited about because that means I get to talk about things. <laughs> and that's the whole point of these, really, at the end of the day. Sharing the love and teachings of animation. And a poppin' song to boot. I mean, I'm not reacting to the song in this video, but... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of thought we were done, but there's still more. Like, I'm not sure where this is going. This might have something fun hidden in the, uh... Hidden in the ranks, and I'm like, I don't want to stop paying attention just in case. Oh, I was right. Oh, I was so right. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. We're talking about this. I'm still bopping. Really getting use of the camera again. Pretty much every single short I watch of Honkai, they've got brilliant camera control. Anyway, with that said, let's get over to the breakdown, shall we? So let's start with something really simple. The general idea of all of these geometric shapes in here. Geometric shapes are obviously the building blocks of animation and art in general. They are seen as just simplified shapes to use in order to format a design, a concept, an idea, even an emotion. So all of these shapes throughout this project, I may go by and mention each one individually. This specific section here is kind of interesting to me. Just in the sense of the first explosion and everything here, the cubes being wiped away and exploding, I'm not entirely positive on the symbolism in any of this. But what I would take from this one is that there is a uh, somebody challenging structure. Something that is so heavy and weighted like a cube being blown apart can be something as simple as a challenge to the norm or the status quo. And things like this showing it shattering and falling to smaller, less uniform pieces is just a general, in my mind, conceptualization and visualization of that path that they may be taking visually. Another thing to talk about on this shot specifically is a really good emotional shot. And I think that the way they did this effectively was they took the 3D model and everything on it. And then they may have done a draw over of the expression to make it a little bit more bright. So you can do this within 3D programs these days. Pretty much all of them allow you to draw within. And I believe they drew these in the program purely because of things like the one eye being partially covered by hair and that being able to be forced through the hair visually is something that would be very hard to do in a composition rather than just doing it natively in the program. So you're having this very bright expression that is extremely easy to read but you can see on parts like this on her face here where the geometry of her face doesn't quite line up with the angle of the eye here. This sort of bulbing that happens at the end usually would have some sort of a uh, press in where the cheek would be at an angle like that. So what I believe they may have done is just taken a simple shape and then animated the face on top of it later. 
but they may have had some sort of a placeholder face on there as well. It's kind of hard to tell. It could be entirely intentional that the face is so smooth like this without any sort of cheek bump or anything, but usually there is a bump there when people turn their heads. It happens in real life. It happens in most anime, and it takes a very specific angle for that to be hidden. This might be one of those cases, but in my expert opinion it may have just been a blank face that they animated the face onto later whether that was done in cg entirely or drawn over with 2d like i had mentioned is kind of up in the air since i'm not the one that did the shot it's not really easy to tell but that's my theory. This doesn't really have so much to do with anything I'm going to talk about at a super technical level. I just think this is really cool. This energy expanding out is something I talk about a lot in Honkai animations. The electricity, the way that it just kind of sparks and flings itself around is always handled very well. But I also really love the idea of having these primary colors of red, blue, and green coming out of this black mass. It makes everything feel that much more energized. And in almost a corrupted sort of context where you have this extremely aggressive color aberration happening within this black mass that just shows a lot of energy being spent in a way that is not super common and that's why i wanted to mention it just very creative visual direction on that one while this probably is not intentional this sequence here of all of these long strands of cubes and various lengths and groupings reminds me a lot of AF Shepard's work. He has worked on stuff like the music scene by Blockhead, the music video for that song. I'll probably show it on screen here. This sort of concept of having these huge geometric explosions in these groupings and these really creative ways is something that Anthony Shepard has always done and really did in that music video. And I love it visually. It is extremely a treat to watch if you like animation. That's something to watch if you really like this sort of psychedelic surrealist animation. His work, Anthony Shepard, is brilliant. And especially that music video for Blockhead was just insane. So definitely if this shot ever piqued your fancy while you were watching this and you want to see something kind of like this, definitely go check out that music video. Nobody is telling me to, but I'm going to be calling this sequence here Cyber Moon. Uh, I really like the way that this handled itself. All of the, uh, the previous outfit just kind of flittering away into little chunks kind of like we saw earlier with those geometrics again insinuating change and then this butterfly which obviously has some sort of significance in the story is just a very clever visual thing there's not a bunch to talk about there but i just wanted to talk about it because i thought it was kind of fun i really did like this shot here where all of the uh force perspective that comes in with her feet being super close to the camera and making her body look that much smaller in the distance to add all of that speed along with these blurs on the feet it's a really good way to show that visual speed and accelerate that thought process in the viewer's mind and go oh she's close oh now she's far away it's such a jolt to the mind that you immediately perceive it as speed this shot reminds me a lot of a prior shot from a prior animation for Honkai that I fail to remember the name of at this moment but I'll probably put it up on screen too just because of the uh the visual direction here is very similar with the character going up this long stretch and having that sort of speed again really selling that intent and this one being a little bit more flavorful with it by having her change direction while still on it instead of jumping off and changing the shot to a different one I just really like the push in that this does on her very very nice visual direction here I was actually almost thrown off the first time watching this because of this fade here between these two shots. What an interesting choice to have the fade here. It's strange because it works, but she is so clearly in different poses here. I don't know why the brain just kind of forgets about things like that. It's visual trickery. She's in roughly the same spot on the screen, so that's probably why it feels good in motion. But as far as the pose goes, it's completely not right, but that doesn't matter, which is also a really fun thing to talk about when it comes to animation how you can kind of trick the brain into thinking different things despite there being 
clear inconsistencies between them. This, of course, is a general film thing, but I'm an animator, so I talk about it in animation more so. I almost forgot to mention here, too, this little after image that appears before this, like, robot that she's in control of or in works with. I'm not entirely positive. Again, story is not really my thing here. But uh, I really like how it appears, disappears, and comes back right in time for the huge flash. And you almost use it as an impact frame, which as we all know here who have been around for more than one video, I loves me some impact frames. <laughs> I really like how this is handled too. Uh, it almost treats this energy beam as a sort of impact frame here with how it shows everything on one frame, then it changes in the next and on the third. It's, it's like throwing the energy around in a clockwise position because it started here and then you saw a frame here just before this one which had the energy down farther and it's following this curve up and I just think that that is super cool to show that spread of all of that energy there's literally so much energy that it can't keep it in one location and I love just using the frame by frame features to back and forth on explosions like this because you can see exact frames of what was copied and of course in big explosions like this especially ones that are covering an entire shot why would you draw a bunch of different ones you would draw a small handful and just randomly select them in sequence in order to make the explosion feel longer and bigger than it actually is it's a clever way to change the scene if you want to get somewhere else if you want to just show that much energy you can utilize just a couple of drawn frames and there you go, done. <laughs> but just like that last one that faded out, this one also fades out into a different smoke, different color and everything. But you really don't worry about it or think about it because you just assume the camera moved. But in motion, it feels so natural when we go back here and just boom, bam, you don't even think about it. But it's a completely different shot, completely different palette, completely different everything. And that's just a really weird, interesting at how it works, but clever way to just kind of cheat the system there. Like I'd said, those are great for just changing shots. You don't even worry about it that much. This sequence overall is really fun, just using the camera to its fullest flexibility, really throwing it around in literally every pointed angle in order to follow this action. And all, all of this stuff going on, like I had mentioned, the Itano Circus, I just called it a circus earlier, but the Itano Circus is something I've talked about a number of times on this channel already. It is just a thing that got popular because a guy named Atano wanted to make a bunch of flying things look cool and it was used in basically everything from Gundam to My Hero Academia ever since. And I'm pretty sure that the Honkai Impact team uses that as an inspiration for a lot of these shots because they're oh so similar but never bad to have around. Here's another example of one of those really interesting fade wipe changes that they use here. Uh, this one's fun because you see this uh, piece following this line down here, and you can almost assume it's going to wrap back up and cross in front of the camera just because that's how the brain works. You're expecting something at all times. And it kind of does, but it's really just a fade over. So it looks like she was covered, but then it uses that to just change the shot entirely. These are really clever ways to transition and are very underutilized. And you really don't think about them when they're in motion. I know I've said that a few times in this video already. I'm not sure if each one of them will make it into the final cut, but this is the sort of thing that I'm talking about, a prime example of it. And I'm not really going to do much here except for just highlight the beautiful frame by frame work that this monster arm has going on to show it exploding just some beautiful frames in here some great evolution all the explosions the ripples coming out from it just very well followed it almost feels like Miyazaki work from Princess Mononoke with how lively it is really like how it feels this sequence here is basically a confirmation to me that they are utilizing some 2D on top of the 3D. This hair is insanely clean. It wouldn't just be rendered on top of there. And then it changes just on one or two frames between, I think it's on like about fours right now, which is pretty low frames, especially compared to the rest of the work around it and the camera movement. So they're trying to make it work by drawing the hair on top of a rendered 3D shot and it works great. It's just moments like this where things kind of pop into place that you really can tell that it's happening at all. And here's that other shot I really wanted to talk about. 
of just the way it's utilizing all these shapes now. It's grouping them together and making them into little mosaic pieces that can be projected onto by using masking tools and editing and composition. So pretty much all they're doing is taking the singular color that all of these cubes are and making that one color into a filter, basically, that you can place pretty much any image on top of scope it down to just show on that one color and use it as a platform to showcase a different image. This is super common, usually used for stuff like green screen. It's the exact same process, just on a little bit more of a creative scale. But all in all, these sorts of visual flares that happen are really fun to look at, and I like to point them out when they happen. It's also worth mentioning that in this same sequence, we're seeing all of these different types of geometric shapes appearing in one. We're seeing not only the cubes now, but we're also seeing the uh, triangles and pyramids and these spirals in the back as well. Very interesting to have spirals there. So if we're breaking it down on the whole what does it mean symbolism, I can't really tell you for each one of them obviously but i would go with maybe the spiral is showing that spiral of change happening the fluidity of change happening this might be a thing where they might not have just the cubes anymore they also have things like these triangles and these pyramids throughout to show that they can exist at the same time and that change has actively occurred or i'm reading too much into it which is more likely the case and I love the symbolism on this shot because you're seeing two of the same thing, a pretty much perfect mirror image. The camera flinging around it, showing that they're all in one space, finally finding each other and finding unity in that moment with all of these change shapes around them. All of this symbolism is just my own speculation, but... While talking about the animation, it's fun to talk about the reasoning behind certain decisions like this and why they may be the way they are. But yeah, that's pretty much it. This was a very long one. I'm not quite sure how long this video is going to be, but considering just this portion of the animation breakdown is running at around 30 minutes, I can assume it's going to be a long one. So if you want to see more of these, by all means, stick around. You know how to do all that. You know how to follow me and whatever else have you. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye! <laughs>